What's good, YouTube people? Kent Howard, Green Mountain Defense, coming at you today with yet another project for my schooling at the Sonoran Desert Institute School of Firearms Technology. Uh, if you're interested in that, hit them up, www.sdi.edu. You can take a, a associates in firearms technology like I am, or you can take individual classes, so go on over there and check that out. Today's project is all about hydro dipping. Hydro dipping essentially uses water and these products right here from dip one, two, three in order to put different patterns and designs on metal, plastic, all sorts of different things. So today I'm hydro dipping something I no longer need because this is the first time I've ever done it. Let's be honest, pretty good chance I might screw it up. We'll see what happens. This is an old uh, key mod handguard for my SIG MPX. I've since upgraded to Midwest Industries goodies so no longer need this handguard. But, never know, it could turn it into a cool showpiece. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you guys step by step in what hydrographic dipping looks like and what we need to do. Um, essentially guys, what we're really doing is painting and then activating this film in water and allowing ourselves to be able to dip this all the way down and all the way back up in the depth in the uh, in the water and the coating on this film will transfer onto the product so like any good painting project step one is always going to be preparation we want to make sure we rough up the surface real good we're going to want to make sure that we give the paint something nice and hard to bite to so step one go to town with the scuff pad make sure we scuff up the entire surface to be painted. I wish I could, but I can't really give you an exact science to this. The real truth is we just need to abrade the entire surface that we're dipping to. We need to remove all oils, we need to remove all grease, etc, etc. Um, Obviously, when we clean guns and accessories for guns, there's oils and all kinds of shit everywhere. We need to go down to bare metal here. What you'll notice is I'm not going to focus too much on the inside of this handguard because it'll never be visible when it's on a firearm. And I'm not so worried about what it looks like. Just focusing on the outside. I'll tell you right away, when you get this kit from Dipstick and you go to town on metal, I'm actually leaving some residue from the scouring pad on the metal, so I'm gonna to have to blow that off. Note to self, bring air compressor downstairs next time. Oh well. Step two. Cut white. Multi-purpose industrial cleaning white. Tear open and use. So we're gonna do just that. Go to town with this here cut white. While I'm doing this, notice here on my table that I've got a base coat the activator for the spray for the film and a clear coat. Those are the three aerosols that you're going to be sent. If you check out Dip123's website, what you'll notice right away is there's a bunch of different combinations of uh, colors and patterns and films and all kinds of stuff you can get. Um, candidly, I'm not even sure what they've sent me here. So we're going to see. Looks like some sort of green multicam. Should be pretty interesting. So I'm just going to town on the surface prep here. As I suspected, I was able to kind of fold over and get that red nasty from the Brillo pad out from in between my uh, rail sections here, so that worked out good. Glad I didn't need to go grab the air compressor. Go 
going right to town. Just another little note. Uh, this whole thing is getting hydro dipped. There will be no taping here, so I'm not taping the hand stock, and I'm not taping my uh, rail section for my light attachment or this top rail section. Um, just because I want the whole thing to come out looking the same. So we're going to see how that works out. So there we go. We've scuffed. We've used the cut white. Now we're going to go back with Mr. Tack Cloth. All things can be achieved through Jesus and a pocket knife. There we go. Now we're going to hit this guy with this tack cloth. This stuff uh, kind of reminds me of like cheesecloth. It's really, really got like a tacky substance to it. I guess that's why they call it tack cloth. And this is going to pull up whatever we might have left behind from the other two steps there in the surface prep. I don't know if the camera's showing through, but you can really tell that I scuffed the surface good on this. And I'm seeing, you know, signs of metal coming through the original finish. So, I think I've definitely scuffed enough. We will see in person, of course, but I think I've got it pretty well happy. All right. This is also, this tack cloth is helping to kind of dry things, which is good. And there's just a little oil and grease coming through on the tack cloth. Nothing, you know, you could, there's nothing saying you couldn't repeat step one, two, and three if you came back to here and found that, man, I really didn't get things as clean as I thought I did. But it's working out just fine. We are good to go. Okay. Ready for the fun part? Here comes the fun part. Nobody tell my wife I'm painting shit in the basement. If you uh, got the joke there, you realize my wife's probably the one filming this. And I just got a smile out of her. This is uh, one of those times in life when you want to realize that marry the right person, so they'll put up with all your shenanigans. <laughs> You know, doing gun school crap in the basement. Okay, moving on. Time to paint. Why not, right? Everybody look at my bald head. Wait. Super PPE expert here. Whoop de doop de doo. This really sucks with glasses, by the way, folks. Yeah, sure. Why not? Back over the top we go. Base coat. Shake your paint. Not too shabby. So we are going to just make some light. Oh, 
always going at it from different angles. Sure, we get in all the nooks and crannies. We're gonna go ahead and cut here for a minute and let this dry. We'll be back in a second. Okay, painting is complete. Um, off camera, we let that dry a little while, and uh, I actually kind of went at it with a hair dryer to speed up the drying process a little bit, and uh, went back and gave it a few extra coats. Paint dries pretty quickly, but um, just something to note. You'll want to you'll want to give it about five minutes between coats and just kind of go back lightly. Slow is uh, good, and a little bit will do ya. So now we got to prepare the film for the uh, submersion tank, if you will. Now there's a whole thing about using PVC to make a frame and make sure the tank's big enough, etc. I'm gonna coat. I'm gonna literally make the film the size of this. Um, you know, little Tupperware thing because all I'm dipping is this guy and he's going to dip in there just fine and come back and dip in just fine and come back. So I'm not super worried about overusing this film here. So I'm going to lay some out roughly like so. We're going to cut right about there. Nice, easy, smooth cut. Oops, except right at the top. Then we're gonna right about there. need to be able to allow the film to lay on top of the water. So I'm just going to trim just a little more. Like this. And following the principle of a little dab will do you here. So we get right like that. Okay. So there we go. I'm just gonna let that film kind of lay there and flatten out a little bit. Next thing we need to do is get off camera and fill our tub with some water. 85 degrees, about lukewarm bath water temperature. We're gonna cut and we're gonna come back and do that. Filming. One quick thing I forgot to mention was the use of masking tape. 
to outline the uh, piece of film here. So, all you're really going to do is just make yourself a tape outline for your film. Kind of to promote rigidity so that you don't have your film just flopping all over the place on you. So, that's just one quick little aside here. That one doesn't like me. We'll continue this off camera, just a quick note, you're going to want a masking tape off the edges of your piece of film. Okay, a couple other things we did off camera for you. We taped our film, putting diagonal cuts on the corners and on the sides like so. Wet your fingers like this and pinch whichever side it sticks to, in my case it sticks to the this side here, the top side is going to go down into the water. So, without further ado, we will let it hit the water. Oops. Well, laying on top of the water with as few air bubbles as possible. Oh, this isn't going good. There. This could, uh, could be going better for me, to be honest with you. This could be going a lot better. We have failed. Womp, 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 womp. Okay, so, showing my failures on camera. Time for a bigger tank of water. I need more room. So, we're gonna get this all off camera, wipe it out, come back and do it again. Okay, so, um, epic fail. <laughs> Hopefully less epic fail. Again, sticky side down. Got plenty of room this time. Yes. Yes. Zero failures. Yes. That was the look we're going for. Just gonna let that just kind of chill out. Get a little air bubble action. Air bubble is arguing with me. We're going to defeat the air bubble by pushing him to the outside. Mr. Air Bubble. Mr. Air Bubble. He doesn't seem to want to. Yeah. Yes. Now, you'll notice that I've attached these handy dandy Green Mountain Defense custom shoestrings. And we're going to dippy dip. But before we dippy dip, we have to activate. This is a learning experience. Again, this is uh, not me claiming to be the world's greatest hydro dipper. This is me learning how to hydro dip with all of you. So, spare me in the comments. Unless you have constructive criticism. Which, in that case, I'd love to learn something. Aerosol activator. Shake and shake and shake, shake. Probably cancerous. Cancer is bad. What begins to happen 
is that begins to get a glassy look to it. <clears throat> we should probably uh, open those doors. Excuse me a minute. Now, at a 30 degree angle, we dip. Ooh, very neat. Just like that. You'll notice that the water is kind of clear outside the tape frame. That's pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to bring him over here and let him dry off for a minute and we're going to cut the camera then we'll rinse him. Okay, <laughs> now that we're dipped we got to get the slime nastiness off of this bad boy. So, best way I can figure to do that. Go right at it. Lighting is not the greatest in our downstairs shower thing here in the basement. notice is that the pattern itself is not coming off. Just the slime. Certainly going to be aggressive about this. Don't want any slime left. Okay, so I think we might have won here. I think we might be good. Let's take that back and clear coat it. All right, drying it off now. Kind of got like a OD green desert tan mixture pattern going on here. This being my first attempt, what? don't fall off your stool. Certainly, I'm gonna say not good enough for a customer, but could have turned out way worse. Kind of looks cool. So we're just going to pat them dry here. Just 
once we have him dry, we will come back for a clear coat. So we're going to go ahead and speed the process up with our handy dandy hair dryer and we'll be back to you in a minute. Okay, feeling pretty decent to the touch to me. Um, just some notes on this. I think maybe, uh, so if they're behind the camera pointing out to me, she thinks maybe I did a little too much swirling in there. And as a result, I've got some of the black film pieces that kind of overbuilt up on this. But the overall pattern is pretty pretty distinguishable. You got the green and the tan blending together in kind of a FDE camo pattern. It came out pretty well. I'm happy with the paint finish. That's working good. Um, this is not this. I would never let this out the door to a customer though. Um, I would try to get better at the actual dipping process itself. Again, guys, you're learning with me. This is for school. Um, this is my first attempt. Not afraid to show you my fam my uh, failures on film. You saw me too small a tank. You saw what that resulted in. So, so far, notes being bigger tank than you think you need and more of a straight down 30 degree angle dip and pull out and less of a rocking, swirling motion. So, two things of note, but uh, we're going to go ahead and call that close enough for government work. We're going to remove our coffee from the workstation. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to clear coat this bad boy. So, doop -de doop -de doop. Us bearded guys love these things, let me tell you. They suck, but you know, so does cancer, so we'll avoid Mr. Cancer as much as we can. Clear coat. Again, nice, easy, even coating. Nothing too crazy. The rest of the process really just bears repeating. So all we're going to do with this from here is let it dry, come back, re-hit it with clear coat, let it dry, re-hit it with clear coat, let it dry, and re-hit it with clear coat. Um, one more note for a project for what you would want to be able to do this with, as you saw, I'm having to kind of manipulate the part with my finger a little bit. I don't like that so much. I'd much rather a permanent setup where I could hang it and spray with it hanging. Um, I just don't have that option here in my home shop in the basement. So, uh, 
This has been Kent Howard with Green Mountain Defense doing a little hydro dipping project on a SIG MPX handguard. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, show me your stuff. Post up in the comments. Show me your projects. Um, give me constructive criticism. Tell me what you think of it. This is for uh, SDI firearms and finishes, um, coatings and so forth labs. So that's what we're working on here. www.greenmountaindefense.com. Kent Hauer at Green Mountain Defense, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all those places, Twitter. Our handle is at Green Mountain Defense. If you got some shopping to do for Christmas, check out our Amazon and our other affiliate links in the description box below. Thanks for watching and make sure you get out and train. We got a big training calendar that we'll be releasing in January of 2019. Merry Christmas, everybody. Hope you're having a good one. Green Mountain Defense, out.